this video I'm going to be doing a comparison of some features and the action of the LH9 and the Lionheart Regulus. Now, uh, already people are uh, uh, kind of have learned that you know, the Regulus is basically an Americanized and very enhanced version of the uh, Lionheart LH9 or DP-51. Now the DP-51 is less expensive than the LH9, however it's lacking a few features and refinements that were put into this pistol. This pistol has seen about 20,000 rounds and there really isn't much wear to it, uh, but there are a, a good amount of differences from this one that you know, kind of make it a little less enhanced and it's still a good pistol but and there's some things that's kind of losing out on now. The Regulus is not really supposed to be a direct, uh, you know, crossover from the LH9. What it's actually supposed to do is kind of be like a Wilson Combat or some of the heavily upgraded SIGs, where they're adding a lot of different features to kind of make it more comfortable for the shooter, like how they add grips, you know, uh, different slide serrations, you know, colors or. or or whatever different coatings and maybe a different trigger system but no, this pistol is kind of in that same class and you know they, they do a little a bit of different stuff with this pistol so we're gonna go over those differences real quick now the first thing I want to talk about is magazine capacity now this pistol uh, comes standard with a 13 round magazine and you can get a 15 rounder it's extended these are actually made in America now and uh, these will run for the same price as uh, these magazines, so you're not really paying too much extra. And this basically, uh, the flush fitting magazine makes this the size of the Glock 19, and it does work in the Regulus. However, you know, this 15 rounder right here makes this pistol about the size of the Glock 17. Now, this 13 rounder, you can actually fit 14 rounds plus one, and it's very comfortable, and you still have a little extra room when it's fully loaded. So. I, I'm not really a fan of the 15 rounders because it actually has a dimple right here and uh, Metgar has 17 rounders. These are basically 5906 uh, magazines with a different uh, base and a, a bit of a change to follower so, or at least a little bit of the magazine body. So, you know, not really a fan of the fact that they use 15 rounders instead of 17 because I think it would have kind of put it on par with the competition that everyone's going to obviously compare it to. So, um, after magazine capacity, I guess we could go to the grips. So, on the LH9, you can see that the pure, the diamonds are protruding, and of course you have your emblem right here, and it protrudes out. Now, I had to cut off uh, these little pieces right here that you can see. Now, those can be pretty sharp, and I uh, cut them off on both sides because those are, it's a very aggressive grip, but you have you know, vertical serrations on the front and the back, very much like the Beretta 92FS or M9. And the grip still has the, uh, it has the palm swell that makes it feel like a miniaturized version of those pistols, the Beretta 92FS and the M9. Now, the Regulus kind of changed that, basically responding to uh, some of the complaints. Now, apparently these are compatible with these grips. I, I'm not quite sure. I haven't actually tried it, but uh, you can see that they built up a wall around the pyramids and they made them a little less aggressive. And also, the area where your trigger finger goes, it's not as high. The pyramids are not as high, and that's on both sides. So it makes it a little more comfortable, and it kind of takes away the need to shave down the little diamonds. So the front and back strap carry on a, di a diamond uh, texturing, a diamond pattern texturing on the front and back strap, and it maintains that palm swell that gives it a 92FS you know, kind of style to it. Now one of the features of the Regulus over the LH9 is you can choose between long and short slides. The long slide as I have here is basically a it's basically a 4.1 inch barrel just like the standard LH9 or you can choose a short slide which will have a 3.6 inch barrel. So you can choose the different slides and barrel lengths and you can also get a threaded barrel. Threaded barrel will be a little extra but the frames, all the frames on the alpha and beta uh, frames, the beta frames are basically the LH9 compact frames and you again you can do a long slide on the 
uh, beta frames and they'll all come with little Picatinny rails right here so it's unlike the LH9 so it all comes standard with that Picatinny rail so anyways this is actually pretty modular but there are some things that are a little bit different so as you see here there are of labelings here so you have alpha to indicate what the frame is and long so it indicates what it is so there's no confusion and also instead of the billboard uh, sign for Lionheart they fit it in here on this little contour kind of made it a little low profile and the same on the frame it's just a little low profile they put a little indicator for the disassembly which I would actually line up with the top of this angled cut so uh, also, the slide serrations, as you see, are altered from the LH9, so uh, they're not straight anymore, and also they extend a little bit, so yeah, you see that there. And there was no indicator on here, and you had a billboard of uh, kind of labeling of it being an LH9. Also, the top here, you had wavy anti-glare, which basically this stuff, instead of having a rounded top, it basically flattens it out and limits the amount of glare that you have at the top. Kind of like the barrel has a little bit of glare there. That's what would happen if, you know, it was just a rounded top. So that's really what it's for. So it's a, a non-reflective finish and it prevents glare. Here, they changed it up to a diamond pattern. And also, you have the wraparound uh, kind of, it's a reverse pattern, so the arrows aren't pointing forward, they're pointing back on the top. So when you're actually grabbing it, a lot of people will put their full hand on here for press checks. And I'm not really a press check kind of person, nor am I a front slide serration kind of person, but that's an option. So the next thing on the slide is 1911 style uh, dovetail sites, 1911 Novak sites, and you'll be able to choose what sites come on this uh, when you uh, check out the pistol. So, you know, also, little thing on the aesthetics is fingers, finger uh, reference points. So, I actually noticed that this is actually a good place to rest your thumb, and also putting in, you know, uh, torquing uh, your hand into the grip and using your thumb for added friction it's a good reference point for a proper well rotated forward grip so I actually like that that's a good little feature so it does help it the magazine release hasn't really changed on the grip however the trigger and under here has been rounded a bit because one of the things that was reported was it's a pretty sharp edge right here and it can actually build up this area, this callus, and make it very uncomfortable over time. So, you know, there was a little improvement on that and actually it makes it a heck of a lot better in my opinion. So, the next thing that I want to talk about is the hammers. So, you can see here the different styles of hammers and it, they just modified it from being like a commander style hammer to a nice skeletonized hammer not really that big of a deal but it is a change also notice on the grips they did close up this gap right here where the trigger bar actually goes and also the trigger bar is lifted away from the frame so you reduce that friction and close it up so there's little less of a hole where the trigger guard goes through if you can see that so that's just a minor detail to note there. So, you know, there are some uh, nice improvements here. Now, when we're talking about the action, the Regulus carries over the action and, uh, and also the trigger system exactly. There was no real need to improve it. So when you rack the slide, you get your double action plus where you push the hammer forward. You can use it on safe or off safe. You can lower the hammer, you know, safely and you can have it off safe or, or on safe or off safe and if you have it on safe of course it kills the hammer or you can carry it cocked and locked and of course kill the hammer and you get your nice single action pull you get a lot of options there wasn't really a need to you know polish any parts or anything like that it's still a very reliable system easy to shoot and stuff like that it gives you options on how you want to carry it use it however and it's a proven system when people actually uh, start using it they don't really mind the uh, forward the 
and the pivot point being forward instead of back they actually find this to be more ergonomic and I actually find that it's good because I can rest my uh, thumb on the safety as I'm shooting and it actually is very intuitive to take off so you know that's a point that you know I like to make to people that are using this pistol so again when it's in double action plus you basically put light pressure on the trigger and you're right to single action very much a kind of get to work kind of pistol and you can pull it slow uh, like if you're taking a long range shot and or you can just pull right through it just like that and it's very light very easy to pull and very fast into action so you know that's a that's a good thing in my opinion so now let's talk about the barrel the barrel is a true axis barrel and what that means is this barrel basically sits in one spot and is secured in one place as it's being machined and the rifling is being cut. This is basically the best way to get consistency and exacting tolerances on the manufacturing. Tolerances not being fitting. It's not the same as fitting. Basically, it's dimensional part-to-part -part differences. So they can crank it down to very, very tight tolerances that... Uh, you know it's difficult to manufacture now uh, it's difficult to manufacture a very consistent barrel without doing this uh, this method and and it's not an inexpensive barrel these barrels alone would cost about four hundred dollars but it's a very slow process very exacting but also another attribute to the uh, price is number one you're getting emblems here and this is a forge 4150 bar chromoly barrel so you know, it's a it's a pretty good quality barrel, same metal as uh, the ones found on the military ARs. So, also, it is a titanium nitride coating, and that is one of the best coatings and most durable coatings that you can have, or durable finishes that you can have on a pistol's barrel, or on any barrel, really. And it's actually pretty expensive because it is so hard, and it is not the easiest to manufacture but you're getting all of that with this barrel and it is known to be basically probably the most accurate barrel that you can put in a pistol in the highest quality now when you check out let's go and talk about colors for the frames you they are making some alpine white or just white frames kind of like the stormtrooper uh, pattern you'll get a black a black slide and all this is e Cerakote, the Elite Series Cerakote. So pretty good quality stuff, doesn't wear very much at all. And you also will have FDE gray and just black like you see here, but the slides will always be black at least for now. So the barrels in the titanium nitride coating, you're only getting three options. Gold as you see here, gray and black. And that goes for also the threaded barrels and even the short slides. So you do have a good amount of options. Now in shooting this pistol, basically because it has a little extra uh, weight on on the front end there it does help with recoil a little bit the added weight does but this is already a very light recoiling pistol to begin with so you know it's not much of a difference there the uh, pistol uh, does come back on target very fast just as the yellow tonight but a little bit more because it actually has uh, some more uh, weight at the front so it'd probably help also having a light or laser on the front to add a little more weight but it's already fast into action and the trigger having a very short you know reset you know that actually helps some shooters that haven't learned that you know it's a waste of time to actually track the reset because you're basically limiting your potential to get right back on target and you know shoot faster of course people practice that all the time but you know you're only gonna you're still gonna be limited because those are seconds that are being wasted so anyways there are some more differences like the front machining around the uh, bushing it is a little bit thinner and they machined it back a little bit took off rough edges and stuff like that like around here where the recoil spring protrudes they did machine out these areas they basically just did a lot of extra machining where they took off a lot of the you know rough edges and or sharp edges so they did a good amount of uh, changes like the LH9 here of course has a fixed sight on the front sight the fixed front sight but on the LH9 ends the ones that you will find uh, they'll have a Novak sight uh, cut into them. So the good thing is that Linehart is now able to 
uh, basically uh, manufacture their own pistol with in their own eyes and they don't have to negotiate with S&T Motive to kind of change up their tooling. They can start on their own and provide whatever they can. Also for uh, the unique action of this pistol, the Double Action Plus, they really take pride in it and they see the difference and they get a lot of good feedback. So they label it with this new symbol, this, this cross and then this shield in the middle this little shield that means that it's I'm pretty sure that means that it's uh, safe to carry and then you have the two dashes here which coincide with the indicators here when it is in double action plus there are green indicators in there but this one is a little bit dirty but you can see those two little dashes in there so they're typically bright green but I've gotten mine uh, covered in oil and stuff like that so it's not really the best but yes this is a symbol for double action plus it's on both sides they've marked these uh, pistols with little little things here and there They're, the labelings aren't really obtrusive it's basically you just see the beauty of the pistol and the finish is held up very well at 3000 rounds and I like the pistol the parts are compatible with the internal parts are compatible with the LH9 so if you wanted a more rounded trigger or I believe improved grips uh, you can actually get that on the LH9 and just use those parts skeletonized hammer just internals overall and also if you have this you can actually interchange the slides or put these slides on this frame if you wanted a rail but you know the good thing is that is still modular even um, not just in the Regulus models, but also you know, compatible with the LH9 uh, models as well, and the DP51, and that was really the point. So anyways, I appreciate you all watching, and you know, you guys have a good one.